Hey buddies, welcome to Mass Games. My name is Simon, and today I'm going to show you how to set up, play, and review the game 99, a trick-taking game from 1967, created by David Parlett and it's in the public domain. Now you can play this game on Board Game Arena, or you can play it obviously with a deck of cards. You need to take your deck of cards and take out all the values from two to five. So these cards are all going to disappear. You're playing with 36 cards with a modern variant. There's another variant whereby you can play with jokers, and there are plenty of other variants too. So yes, I have played this on Board Game Arena. It's for three to four players typically. It's best is a four. The other variants is a two and a five, which I'll talk about briefly. The complexity, strategy, and luck is around three out of five, and the interaction is two out of five. And it's been available on Board Game Arena since last year. And it's in the precision category of games, which is rather interesting. So I mentioned it's invented in 1967, but in fact, uh, the game is on Board Game Geek as 1974, which is the year it was first appearing in the magazine Games and Puzzles, so the Games and Puzzles magazine. So it has attracted uh, basically many people, and it's an enthusiastic game, uh, along, with, along with many other card games in this kind of trick-taking family, which is the ones I like, amongst other many other types. And basically the idea is to secretly bid to win an exact number of tricks, Neither more nor less, and ultimately uh, there are other games from, say, the 1930s, such as Oh Hell, but this one's a bit more original in that you have to remove cards from your hand in order to bid, uh, and of course that can make life very tricky. So I'll show you some examples and uh, what the relevance is the Niners as well, but it's basically tried to be the meeting the need of uh, the skill with a uh, whist-like game uh, for three players, but of course I mentioned it works uh, as well for four as I mentioned, and again there are other versions where you can play fewer or more players. Now again, there are other variants, but I won't be focusing on them specifically. I'm going to be focusing on the three-player mode. I misspoke earlier, is a three-player uh, game in particular this works best at that. And just whilst I'm um, doing this, you deal out all these cards. So whilst you're dealing out your 12 cards, again, in a three-player version of this game, the standard version of the game, please hit the like button to show me that you're enjoying the content. Make sure you're watching this directly in YouTube. Also, yeah, hit that like button, show me you're enjoying the content, as I said. Subscribe if you haven't already, hit the notification bell. I've got many other videos on not just these kind of games, but printed board games, of which I've got hundreds lined up. As well as additionally to that, uh, check out the comments, please add something, and also um, check out the description. There's loads of interesting stuff, such as how I play the games with other people and see how they look on things such as Instagram, Facebook, and also other social media, such as WhatsApp and uh, Twitter. Okay, so the trump suit, you basically um, you turn up um, a card for the current deal, and unless it is a nine or the joker, uh, basically that means there isn't a trump. So I mentioned you can have a joker, but we're not going to talk about it. And as I mentioned, the object of the game is to win exactly the number of tricks that you bid. You bid secretly by making uh, three cards, by basically discarding three of your cards facing down, sorry, face down, and hence you're going to be leaving yourself nine cards in play. Uh, your bid cards must be selected in such a way as to represent how many of the nine tricks you undertake to basically trying to win. For this person, the suit, uh, for this purpose, the suit of each trick uh, of each bid card represents a specific number of tricks by meaning of the following code. So if you happen to discard a diamond, what that represents, um, you're trying to win zero tricks. If you discard a spade, that means you're trying to win one trick. And finally, again, you're third, discarding a third card. If you did happen to discard, say, a heart, we'll come back to clubs in a moment, that means you're trying to win two tricks. And then if you haven't scarred a club, which happens to have in the shuffle, then in this deal, um, you're trying to win three tricks. Now remember, you're only playing three cards. So if you're playing that, well, that's three, two, one. So you're trying to win six tricks. You might do something like that. You're trying to win two tricks. You could have all diamonds. You're trying to win zero tricks. So there's lots of different ways of playing it. So imagine you have lots of low value hands. You're probably going to play lots of diamonds, but then other people are going to see it. But of course, if you're playing out a club and you've got a high club, where you're trying to win loads of clubs, such as this card here, it's a great card to have, but then actually you've just discarded it to say you want to win it. So it is, like I said, it's a precision uh, theme. That's a precision mechanic of the game, which is very interesting. So let me come back to the trumps. So the suit or the turned up uh, card is basically the trump suit for the current deal, unless, again, it's nine or the joker. So if a nine happens to be revealed, let's go back to that deal. So whoever cuts the highest card, they deal first. So firstly, you're going to do that, and then uh, the turn uh, to deal and pass always goes to the left. And then again, you're doing 12 cards based off the last one will be uh, that trump card. Of course, um, in this instance, uh, that final card would be uh, off to one side, and that would represent whichever one you're playing with. Okay, so bear that in mind. And uh, of course, that's if you're playing with a joker. 
So yeah, just bear that in mind. What you might want to do is actually just grab a card, turn it over the beginning in a sturdy six card variant, and then see which tr trick you're going to be leading off with. Again, play it on Board Game Arena. It's really swift to play it there. And then try it out, obviously, when deck of cards, where I've got many. So as I mentioned, um, it easily represents things, and there are some various ways that you can try and remember it. Uh, there's nothing really specific, but if it points up, it could be a one. Obviously, all these cards are symmetrical, but um, you could say if you're in love, you have two hearts, one each, and a club. Well, obviously, it's got three points, so maybe that is anything to do with why you'd think it. And diamonds, well, if you're unmarried, you've got zero, so if you're not married. That's my way of thinking about it, but just, again, look online and you'll see it, and it's really straightforward, or just write this down. So premium bids. Normally, bid cards are basically left face down throughout the tricks of play, but for an additional bonus, you may offer to declare by turning up your bid cards face up at the start of play. So imagine you'd normally discard three cards face down. What you could choose to do is offer to blame face up. Thus, you're declaring your target and revealing more information about the lay of your cards or the lie of your cards. So um, as I said, you normally have these three cards and you're saying, I'm going to bid a certain amount and then you do it face down. And of course, you're then going to figure out later on that they're telling the truth. Um, but of course, penalties as well, however you want to forfeit them. But for a higher bonus, you can also offer to reveal. So not only are you saying um, you can actually turn declare, obviously, what you have. Um, you could actually be saying even more by you know, perhaps talking about just the suit, just the, the values, or of course, all of them. But let's talk about that separately. That's you know, an additional kind of thing you could be doing. And I don't want to be distracting the variance. Apologies for that. So only one player, by the way, can declare or reveal. So if you happen to do, want to do that, then that is one thing, but only one person is going to be doing it because I'm guessing there it's the right to want to commit and you're trying to force yourself to do it. And of course, you could be getting more points, which we'll come back on to. So if more than one person wishes to declare, the leader has priority over the middle player and either of them has priority over the dealer. Anyone offering to reveal has priority over anyone other card and to basically declare their position. And if two or more uh, wish to reveal, then the same positional priority applies. Apologies if that doesn't make it much sense. I'm trying to actually kind of use the vernacular as it was written by the actual designer. So let's talk about the play. Dealer to the left, what they're gonna do is they're gonna lead the first trick. You must follow suit if you can. So let's say this person, we've got rid of these cards. They've got rid of these three cards. We didn't know what they were doing, but they happened to bid. So remember two, two and one, they bid five. And now they're gonna lead with, let's say a 10 of hearts. So they're leading with that, this person has to follow. And yeah, they try and beat off them. So maybe you'd normally typically want to try and win your early tricks. Um, the trick is taken by the card of the highest of the suit or by the highest trump then you're played. Uh, the winner of each trick leads to the next. So in this instance, again, you must follow suit if you can. They've got a nine, they lose, they win the trick. And of course, these people are going to lead off next. And so onto the scoring. So if you took exactly the number of tricks that you bid, you must turn up your bid cards to prove it, as I mentioned. Okay, so again, it's all hidden information and then you're gonna prove it. And as I mentioned as well, um, uh, you must turn up your bid to prove it. If not, you can keep them hidden, okay? So if you happen to get, want to get one, then you can reveal, ha, I've got one. But of course, you could always wait and then we know, ah, they didn't bid one. Okay, for each score, uh, so you score one point for each trick you've won, regardless of how many you've bid. Additionally, if you succeed in winning the exact number of tricks you needed as well, you're going to get bonuses. So if all three succeeded, uh, that's all three players, basically you get a bonus 10 points each. If only two players succeed, they get a bonus of 20 points each. If only one player succeeds, that they're gonna they get basically adds a bonus of 30 points. There's an additional bonus of 30 points for declaring. So of course saying basically what we're going for or for revealing, okay? So again, declaring is just saying, I wanna win three tricks. So in this case, they're trying to win one, two, four, so they're trying to win six tricks. So you're just saying, I, they're still face down, but you're saying, I want to win six tricks. The alternative is revealing, and therefore you're saying, that's what I have. So now they know, there's no, no, no worries about the king. So if you had a queen of clubs, maybe once that ace of clubs is gone, you can start playing that. So again, there's an additional bonus of if I happen to say, you know, I've got, I want to get six. If you happen to get six, you're going to get additional 30 points. And if you happen to reveal, you're going to get additional 60 points. Okay. Uh, again, that is, uh, this goes to the, de the declarer or the revealer if they're successful. Um, or if they're not successful, it's going to go to your opponent. So watch out for that. Now, the highest score can be made in one deal. So the highest score you can get is 99. And that occurs when one player wins all nine tricks. So that's nine points. Is the only player to succeed. That's another 30 points and played with revealed cards, so that's 60 points. 
So you need to have three clubs to win Berg. One, two, three, three clubs. Gameplay. So you're going to play nine deals or any multiple of nine if you wish. And basically it's the winner who has the highest score after all those rounds. And uh, alternatively, a game is 100 points and the first winner to get, um, basically to win three games is uh, how you're going to play it. And uh, yeah, see how you get on and the strategy. So let's talk about that, as I mentioned earlier. So three players and nine tricks. Therefore, if in doubt, bid three. I uh, note, of course, that the four suits do differ in, in trick taking potential according to their you know, differences in bid value. So since the average bid is three and the various ways of representing this are, well, you could be getting a club, which obviously represents a three. And then naturally, if you can remember your uh, logic for this, you're going to be bidding diamonds because that represents zero. That's one way of getting and you bid three. Another way you could bid is you could bid a diamond, sorry, a spade, spade, and spade because spades, as I said, represent one. Or you could represent a heart, which we know represents two. You could represent a diamond representing zero and representing a spade representing one. So different ways of doing it. Now I don't meta it thinking what on earth they could be playing, but it follows that diamonds and spades are more likely to be out in bids than hearts and clubs. So given the average distribution, hearts and uh, sorry, clubs are therefore usually all in play and will go around at least twice without being roughed, i.e. Uh, out of uh, being able to follow suit. Um, so the aces and kings are usually reliable trick winners. Also, clubs are especially reliable as trumps, as it would be uh, self-defeating, obviously, to discard them in bids. At the opposite end, though, let's talk about uh, diamonds. Of course, they're very unreliable. The ace is often um, is not basically taken out, so it's going to have to be used on that first diamond lead. And of course, once diamonds are trumps, there's usually at least one player who will discard three of them, especially the ace, king and queen, uh, obviously, to try and get zero points. Because, though, you are aiming for an exact number, low cards are as important as probable trick losers as high ones, um, because ultimately middle ranking cards are unreliable in either respect. So it's usually best to discard tens, jacks and nines as bid cards and to retain aces, kings and sevens and sixes, because, of course, you remember you're trying to get the exact number. Maybe you want to bid low, of course. So that's where the middle ranking cards aren't to your helpful or to your benefit. Nevertheless, if you really uh, obviously want to find a sensible way of bidding, a good ploy is to throw in three cards whose absence from play is most likely to stop everyone else's, such as um, the top three trump cards or three aces. Um, we can make, of course, a bid, but of course, uh, you've got to watch out for that. So again, if you have any questions about that, please let me know. Like I said, there are other variants out there. There's like 18, 99, 99 declared, junk the joker, no trump variant, as I talked about. Um, in this instance, you basically just got to follow suit if you can and uh, basically you play any card if you can't, so far as obviously normal for the rest of the game. But the difference, however, is that the trick is always taken for the highest card played, of course, regardless of suit. So two more cards tie for the highest, the first then beats the others, etc. So I hope you found that of interest. That has been the game of 99. Please try it on board Game Arena. Hopefully this will help. Thanks very much. Bye for now.